Good afternoon. I think we are ready to begin our very pleasant meeting of today. As you know, we have been organizing very interesting meetings with very interesting architects. They are coming from different countries, of course, so they can come and uh, give us uh, different approaches. Today we have Mr. Sergei Juan. He is a Russian architect, but he works in Berlin. And of course, he will be presented by Pippo Chora in a few minutes. This is the first meeting of our uh, of this year. Next week, we will have Willy Mass, a associate to a, a Dutch firm, architectural firm with international reputation. So, let me go back to Sergey. First of all, thank you. Here today, we have the consul from the embassy, friends and uh, uh, representatives. Well, he was our ambassador, so to say, before he became an ambassador, an official consul for the Russian embassy. Well, he followed us during the early stages of our company in terms of how to integrate lighting fixtures in historical settings. So he contributed to setting the guidelines and the principles of lighting architectural spaces. And uh, welcome as well to the new uh, council. He will be in office uh, in the next few days and uh, I'm sure we will continue our strict and close collaboration also in the future. So again, this is uh, officially a very important meeting. Uh, it is a reason for uh, satisfaction from Mr. Ginesi, Armando Ginesi. We uh, contributed, he contributed uh, with a very important uh, study on the architectural side of lighting. So it was collaboration, it was a matter of opportunities. I can say Mr. Ginesi belongs to the ABC of this company, to the, belongs even in the DNA of this company. And uh, as a consul of the Russian Federation, of course, having here Mr. Sergei is a great honor. And uh, I'm sure we will see each other also in the next meetings. So I will now leave the floor to Pippo Ciorra in order to present uh, Mr. Sergei. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thanks Iguzzini, and uh, my thanks together with the museum where I work. Uh, Iguzzini decided to organize a series of meetings and lectures like this one today. The purpose, of course, is to uh, create a kind of a showcase of important architects and take them to Recanati and to uh, Rome and other places in Italy. This is an important opportunity for our students, for the people working in this company. Of course, it would, be, it would not be easy to listen to such important figures. This is a source of opportunities. We have students going for a stage for internships in the architectural offices. So again, uh, thank you to Iguzzini, thanks to Iguzzini for uh, this project. Today, it's a kind of a new experiment because let's say that we do not know much about Russian architectural. We know constructivism. We know the so-called big heroes of the 1920s and 30s and 40s, the so-called avant-garde. 
architects, but we are quite ignorant, let's say, on much of the uh, remaining history. So we are happy here with Mr. Sergei to have you here in order to try and fill the gap and bridge the gap. So together with the avant-garde, as I said before, constructivism, uh, Sovietic, uh, the so-called Sovietic heroic architecture, but we know that it's a, a kind of a combination of different layers, different cultures. And Mr. Choban today, well, uh, he has put two things together for us. His work as architect and also his work as a curator and a creator of a foundation and of a museum. He was born in Leningrad, well, actually previously known as as Leningrad today went back to St. Pete Petersburg, he studied in an art school where he studied plastic and visual arts, he studied architecture, and right from the beginning he started to feel a very great passion for drawing. He became an academic early in his life, but then he felt, I would say, the need to bring his architectural culture and heritage, which can be defined as oriental compared to Italy. So he decided to bring all this heritage to uh, Western Europe, to Berlin, because Berlin in the 1980s and 90s offered a great number of architectural opportunities. In those years, it was possible to experiment, to transform ideas into buildings so it was important an important location so he continued to work in Berlin and then he worked with Nets, Prischelens and Siegel and then he became an associate of this study office in 1996 and then at the beginning of the third millennium he set up his own professional practice which is the speech architectural office so he's here with us to give a speech together with Sergei Kuznetsov. As architect, Choban has worked a lot. I work in a museum. I met him for a, a special collection, a, some proposals in terms of uh, exhibitions, but he is a professional architect, he's like a 360 degrees professional architect. He has built in Berlin many residential complexes in uh, Hamburg, in Karlsruhe, in Germany, a very interesting hotel, the Now Hotel, and uh, maybe it's a very interesting uh, hotel project. Uh, and most of all, he participated to a very large number of Russian projects, very prestigious ones. He is in the group that takes care of a former secret city, Skolkov, the one we have seen at Biennale. So there is the Zil complex, a big project going on right now in Moscow. And uh, he has built a museum in Berlin. And in this museum, we can find his collection. His collection is made of drawings. That's the main mission of Sergei, saying that uh, drawing is a very important part of architecture. By drawing, we do not simply mean the, the wonderful software application you use on your PC. We are talking about traditional war, uh, drawing, so uh, a pencil, your hand, your eyes, is what you see and what you think about and with drawing. So the museum is dedicated to a very large collection with some Russian, Sovietic, post-Sovietic uh, historical masters and also a collection of personal drawing because from what I understand, you draw every day. So this, bill, uh, this museum has built has been built by Sergei. It's a kind of a tattooed facade. So it's like drawings on the facade itself. So it's very interesting for us. We are actually opening a new frontier. 
These are cultures with, you know, some contact points in terms of architectural history, uh, Le Corbusier and Moscow, or maybe the trips and traveling of Russian architects, Soviet architects to Europe. But, you know, there has been a kind of a non-communication period for some time, so I think it will be extremely important and interesting to open up a window on a new scenario, not only for Mr. Choban, but also other interesting Russian architects. Today, there is a great passion always for drawing. I think it's a kind of a metaphor of considering architecture as a noble form of art. So, thank you, Mr. Sergei, and thanks to the audience for being here. I will now leave the floor to our... Um, so, thank you very, very much for a good scene and for Maxi for uh, organization of this lecture and also for very nice words to what I try to make. So, it's a big pleasure for me that you are all coming and uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, that you are here. Uh, what I like to speak, maybe uh, you can make light not so, not so strong because uh, otherwise we don't see anything. Um, so it's good. Um, we speak today now, in fact, about um, architecture and drawings uh, because I thought it is interesting to explain about this relationship because uh, drawing for me, it's not only an object of collecting or also object of my own work, uh, but also a way of thinking how to come uh, from the thinking of, with a head of a hand uh, to images of architecture and then uh, somehow to realize them in uh, the reality. And uh, so uh, one day I uh, have thought that uh, it is maybe a good idea to organize uh, such a foundation uh, what creates the relationship between drawing and architecture. And of course not to uh, explain and exhibit the drawings of my collection or the drawings of my, in, in no any case of this, but to give a stage for very different institutions in the world, also from Italy, but from many countries, from England, from, uh, uh, from Austria, and from France, from America, uh, to exhibit drawings in this foundation, uh, to give uh, to these museums and institutions uh, the chance uh, to exhibit big collections of architectural drawings, but nobody knows about it now, because these collections normally are in the archives and very, very rare, very seldom uh, are coming to the uh, reality, to the exhibition, because uh, even in the world, uh, such as spaces for exhibiting of drawings, especially architectural drawings, are very rare. And uh, the idea of this foundation, the idea of this museum is to bring them, uh, to bring them to the light, in the light, and to explain about the way uh, of thinking of architects in the very different times, from 14th, 15th century to really now. And of course, as it was told already uh, in the speech before, uh, it is of course very, very good place for it, Berlin, because maybe no one capital uh, of Europe itself uh, wasn't built so active in the last 20 years as Berlin. And I was lucky to be in this time in Berlin to see all these uh, great ideas, big results, maybe some mistakes, but all these things uh, were coming in this time in Berlin over. And I've thought that Berlin would be really the perfect place uh, to organize this foundation here because uh, the people in Berlin are enormous interested in architecture and the discussion about right and wrong architecture, town planning mistakes and big results is coming every time more and more active. And uh, this um, museum is a small space where the people are already since three years, discussing about architectural ideas on hand of drawings. What is very sensitive, what is very sensitive ground uh, of such a discussion. The museum is in Berlin, uh, in the 
Prenzlauer Mountain in the Pfefferberg area, nearby, maybe you know, uh, about AIDES Architectural Gallery. And AIDES Architectural Gallery is our neighbor in this courtyard. And even uh, the recommendation of Christian Feires, the head of AIDES, uh, was a very important point uh, to base this foundation here. It's really in the downtown, it's very nice space. And very welcome to our museum anytime. We are daily open, uh, but now just from the beginning. It is, it is so that uh, I love architectural drawings. I, I think for everybody who is connected with architecture, it's really a very fine part, very fine field to understand architecture through drawings. I uh, have found here some samples uh, from my own collection just to give you an impression what I'm interested uh, in drawings for. Uh, for example, this is uh, uh, your uh, big Italian uh, artist and architect, Giacomo Quarenghi, uh, Palladian uh, architect who was worked uh, in Italian from Bergamo. He was coming uh, to Russia, to St. Petersburg, and was maybe most important architect of uh, neoclassical time of the second half uh, of 18th century and first half of 19th century. And that is his free composition of his drawing. And as one, everybody knows, also Italian. So we are here in a very, very important country for drawings, of course. Uh, that is Giovanni Battista Piranesi and his very free compositions, very free architectural drawings. Uh, where even from my point of view, more interesting as his etchings because in these free drawings, he made really enormous world of very fantastic, very curious architectural worlds, uh, what were never built, but even now they're very modern in the contrastful art of connection of different forms. Uh, oh, uh, Ferdinando Galli Bibiena is the founder of a very important family of stage designers uh, of uh, at least Milano, and uh, they were stage designers, they founded uh, stage design as a piece of art, and Ferdinando Galli Bibiena from the end of 17th century, over 18th century, with his sons and uh, grandsons, uh, was a very important family for uh, establishment of stage design as a part of art. Uh, and then, of course, this, uh, this art was coming over all countries of Europe, and that is Leo von Klenze, uh, very important neoclassical architect uh, in Germany uh, who made a new pinacotech in Munich. That's, Bever uh, that's a uh, gate project uh, for also Bavarian main capital, Munich, in the, uh, 19, in the beginning of 19th century. And uh, we, make, we make jump to the 20th century and see very, very interesting uh, sample of contrast, uh, constructivist architecture that is uh, Yakov Chernikov. Yakov Chernikov was maybe uh, the writer of the main, uh, of the main pieces uh, of constructivist compositions. In the same time as another constructivist architect made his projects like real projects, uh, Chernikov made uh, one after other enormous uh, number of compositions uh, of constructivist worlds. And his most important book, uh, what is now, I think, republished many times, there is also an Italian, very, very interesting book about Chernikov uh, work. Uh, uh, that is uh, the book of 101 compositions. So about uh, colorful compositions was, uh, of 101 uh, images of uh, contemporary architecture. And we see till now that this architecture is still uh, has very contemporary ideas because all ideas of uh, 20th century were coming one after other, but we are on the same day uh, by constructivists and by Bauhaus explained in their projects and drawings. And Chernikov was uh, really in ahead of this moving, and that is one of his very important compositions on this art. Uh, on the same time, and nearly in the same time, because the composition of Chernikov was maybe 1932, but already in 1934, uh, we got this architecture uh, in Russia, also involved very much by Italian culture, by the way, because Armando Brasini was a very important neoclassical architect from Rome, uh, by whom this architect, Boris Iafan, has studied, 
and uh, has graduated from uh, Academy of Art in Rome, was coming after that, after invitation of Russian Foreign Ministry to Russia, won the competition with very, very international, international participants, where Le Corbusier and Gropius and Hannes Meyer and many, many, also Brazini by himself, were participants. Uh, he won this competition uh, with this project of Palace of Soviets, and that is one of uh, formal compositions we are coming uh, for approving for government uh, as a very huge idea, never realized in Moscow, but as a one very crazy architectural world, uh, what was staying on the, uh, only on the piece of paper. And that is interior of the same composition, uh, how the architects, Iofan, uh, has explained his main space uh, in, the, in the Palace of Soviets inside of the uh, big hall of this building. But on the other side, and we see how still international was architecture already in this time, in any time, uh, even where the borders were strong, uh, this work by Hugh Ferris uh, is exactly in the same time, uh, 1928, uh, was coming out the book of uh, Hugh Ferris, Metropolises of Tomorrow, and this book uh, included uh, many uh, pictures of fantastic towns, uh, skyscraper towns of uh, Hugh Ferris. And that is one of them, founder of insurance, uh, what is explaining about high-tech, but article high-tech worlds of uh, end of 20s, be before, before, the big be before the big depression. And uh, you see very, very many parallelities uh, between uh, the building before for Russia and these uh, architectural fantasies uh, for uh, North America. And the last picture in this very contrastful line is about, uh, is about uh, Lebius Woods. Lebius Woods is already the thinker and architect of uh, last 20th century, was uh, died, unfortunately, in 2012 in America, and made a lot of works uh, they are combining with uh, very, very interesting, uh, very, uh, very, or going in the future uh, roles of technique and architecture. And uh, on the same time, uh, I, I think the way to draw is very, very important a way to understand architecture. So I show some of my drawings, just not to explain, I do it so well, but just to see and to show you that uh, drawing can help uh, to understand architecture, uh, can help to understand which kind of architecture you like and which kind of architecture you maybe like to do. And uh, that is just a line, that is my, uh, one of my first drawings I made in Italy. As uh, 1992, I was in Rome and uh, I was, of course, as everybody impressed of this Grand Tour main station. And it goes to uh, fantastic drawings where I try to explain how the new uh, Frauen church in Dresden should be rebuilt, was demolished after Second World War, or in Second World War, or another Italian uh, part, this uh, picture of uh, Venice, uh, Salute Church in Venice, what is very great Baroque building, but also this game of light. We are by Iguzzini, and the light uh, plays here an enormous role. But uh, no, nowhere you see so fantastic light as in Venice. And uh, of course, it's not only uh, an architecture of classical samples, but it's also contrastful architecture, which is much, much more close to our time. For example, the architecture of uh, Chicago where you see this very contrastful world of different forms are coming together, crossing together, but is also very narrow to constructivist worlds, what we have seen before. Uh, uh, all this Soviet, uh, Soviet element uh, of their Soviet architecture of 30s, what shows new ways of rivers were developed in the Stalin time and explained in this picture. And of course, for me personally, it was great experience to be in 2012 in Brasilia and in Rio, and even met, I was so lucky to meet uh, by life, Oscar Niemeyer, and to see his works uh, uh, live. And uh, I think everybody who never was in, uh, in this uh, town in Brasilia should go as an architect there to see 
where the contemporary world of architecture, all the songs of architecture, what we know now, repeat now many times, were born. And uh, that is my own uh, free compositions where I try to understand how the world of this, for example, Living Bridge, Ponte Vecchio, uh, could be created in contemporary forms, or how the small forms of contemporary architecture could be involved on the backside of a historical town on the sample of Petersburg, or how the details of architecture are important uh, for the creating of a scheme of uh, architecture uh, anytime, because the detail it was, uh, is what uh, any visitor, any, uh, anybody who, uh, who sees the architecture, the detail is the most important part what, uh, uh, what uh, makes reception by uh, anybody who looks at the architecture. And uh, of course, drawing helped me by many competitions like this uh, section of competition for main, ra main railway station in uh, Leipzig. Big competition where we made one of prizes, for example. And of course, drawing helps me uh, to understand what is the role of uh, contemporary architecture is now. Because longer time we worked and lived in the experience of very, very uh, very smooth harmony where every next building should be looked out as a building before. All of them had very nice facades with a lot of decor, with a lot of details. Uh, but this way changed a lot in the 20th, 20th and 21st century where the buildings became to be very contrastful to each other. And this language of contrastful architecture of not to using and not for searching a, a harmony between architects of different times. I think now it's a very, very important part of contemporary architecture because contemporary architecture uh, is no, uh, no one time more searching for a very harmonical relationship to the neighbors, but searching for very contrastful and very dense dialogue uh, between old and new. And in this picture, I show how the form of new building uh, could be compared with the forms of historical buildings, and on the other way, uh, repeats but continues this historical language in very new forms. Uh, and of course, this picture, what of course never will done, but uh, as, a, uh, as a fantasy on the very historical, very historical drawing of Piranesi, uh, of uh, Piazza Venezia in Rome, and how the contemporary world connects already today, very contrastful with the, uh, with the, con uh, with the old architecture. And uh, what we see in London, what we see in Paris, what we see in Milano even, we see very, very narrow dialogue between you and old on very contrastful, maybe too contrastful way, but that is the way we live now, and we should know, we should speak about that. And that is a very, uh, very funny picture because the drawing uh, upstairs is from myself and the drawing downstairs is from one, one very important artist who is, uh, who is also Russian, Maxim um, uh, Dmitry Vrubel, who is, uh, who is also uh, the artist of very important picture in Berlin where Brezhnev and Honecker are, kisses, uh, are kissing together. And this uh, kissing is like an uh, like image, like a symbol for what was before uh, the wall was demolished. And um, Dmitri has seen my picture, what, was, what is very contrastful and very dense, and made this dense dialogue of the town. So the towns are today also not the old towns. They have another problems, they have another ways, they have another uh, dialogues or not dialogues to each other. And the contemporary architecture reacts on it uh, with their forms. And of course, um, the architecture helps me personally. I don't think and don't see that everybody should do that. And I'm very far away from the, uh, from the position everybody should draw. No, that's not the point. But I think drawing helps to understand architecture, to understand your own feeling of architecture as professional, as young professional. And on the other side, it makes your life much more rich because uh, if you get good drawing, it's very, very nice and fine feeling. What I got by many people, they begin uh, to draw with me uh, because they became this very fine feeling to get something ready in quite short time to be better and to progress 
themselves with every, uh, every drawing more. Uh, this is a drawing of a very small gallery. If you are in Berlin, maybe you know this place. Uh, that is a hackish courtyard very in the downtown of Berlin. It was, uh, it was my first building uh, in Berlin on the border between uh, the place of very old cemetery. Jewish cemetery was demolished in the Second World War under Nazis. And on this place were old uh, electricity station. And on the place of this station, one young gallery uh, was established and we made as a sponsoring very small, very small gallery for them, uh, for new art. And this, uh, this building till now is quite very small but iconic building for Hakeshe Courtyards. Uh, till now with small uh, fine gallery. And that is also, that is also a picture uh, of the both where Piranesi's worlds and, uh, and contemporary worlds are coming and crossing together. And uh, that became to be uh, a part of reality in the building of uh, Enhau Hotel uh, was realized on the border of uh, East Harbor. Uh, what uh, was explained before, it is quite, it is quite an interesting place. Uh, uh, 2003, I won a big competition, town planning competition for the design of this East Harbor. And, uh, uh, was lucky to build this building and uh, two after, so it is small, small part of ensemble. And uh, this building was important for me not only because it was uh, a continuity of uh, these two old uh, buildings, uh, uh, industrial buildings of Berlin, and Berlin is very important, very uh, famous for industrial buildings of beginning of 20th century with brick. Uh, with uh, very nice details, and I wanted to make uh, this part of the building like a continuity of this old Berlin. And with new cantilever, 21 meter in the free flight, uh, I wanted to make contrast not only to the world before, but also to the world of the hotel itself. That this very dense dialogue, very contrastful dialogue, became to be important not only for surrounding, but also for the building itself, what's very important. And uh, this is also what I like to explain in my drawings, that the different slices of the town from 19th century, from 20th century, from 21st century are coming in uh, our contemporary towns one after other. They are not searching, they are not seeking for, uh, for harmony dialogue, but they are seeking for very interesting postcards still, where old and new are on the contrastful way uh, coming together. And that is uh, exact what I made also in this building uh, with this uh, stainless steel uh, covering of surface of cantilever. And uh, also, for example, in this another building, also in the downtown of Berlin, were the old factory buildings and old living buildings of 18th and 19th century are combining with the possibility to build new but not to ground on the old buildings. That's why this cantilever, L-formed cantilever, what is coming over across of old, but uh, bringing, uh, bringing uh, not touching, but coming over uh, together. And you see that, uh, you see that uh, from upstairs, you see how new, uh, small parts of new and big parts of old and big parts of new and small parts of old are crossing uh, itself, and then maybe you understand why these drawings were shown uh, by me before, because it is really continuity of what I'm thinking in drawings. And, uh, of course, one day, as I explained it to you, I wanted to make this museum, not to celebrate one time more, not to celebrate myself, not to celebrate my own collection, the collection we use to give us to other museums, to make us interesting for other museums, for other foundations, to bring to us pictures, to bring to us drawings, and we give them our drawings because we have quite fine collection of uh, architectural drawings. But, uh, of course, if you would exhibit our collection one day, two days, one year, two years, after three years, everybody will be boring about that and tell, okay, that's enough. But, of course, we don't do that. We give us to all over the world. Uh, only in last year, we had an exhibition by Martha Herford Museum in Germany, by German Cinematic, uh, with Ken Adam uh, Heritage, uh, by Cornell University in, uh, uh, in Cornell in uh, America, 
And uh, we try to give our drawings in parts or completely to many institutions and take the drawings from themselves to give uh, this exchange and this possibility to speak about drawings and architectural ideas in our museum. It comes also from the drawing. It is one part of old Berlin, Prenzlauer Berg, is end of 19th, beginning of 20th, 20th century uh, complex. And uh, I wanted to create contrastful building, uh, but uh, not really higher as surrounding, but with very, uh, with very rough and uh, uh, cubistic materials. It is concrete, but it is cast in place concrete, so it means it is not uh, cladded over construction, but it is construction. It made on place, and uh, these drawings, uh, what was explained about before, uh, they are made with rubber matrices involved inside of the forms, and after the forms were out and matrices were out, you became complete uh, the ready wall, uh, constructive wall, together with these uh, drawings. Uh, so you see this museum by day, uh, for me, for my personal uh, uh, understanding of architecture, is very, very important uh, that I uh, become new ideas or new feelings if I come more and more narrow to the building. I think it is uh, a little bit pity that you come to the building from very long way and you see a nice silhouette, and if you come narrow to the building, very, uh, very narrow. You don't see anything else. And that is, of course, uh, what the old architecture uh, could do much, much better. They could do, uh, they could do this uh, uh, jump from big form to detail, where you, you have seen uh, very, very interesting details by coming narrow, by touching the building. Uh, what contemporary architecture a little bit lost. And uh, I wanted with this building, with many of my buildings, uh, try to make this gap uh, clear and to say, okay, by coming narrow, you see more. You see the small, touchable elements of surfaces, of details, what are, of course, uh, also so important as the big details or big silhouettes. Uh, the building is in, in the middle of a uh, square in, uh, in the downtown of Prenzlauer Berg. It's one of the very, very nice districts, but very democratic districts of Berlin. Uh, and uh, the museum is vertical museum, so you come in, uh, you come in the library where you can see any book. As a person uh, coming in the museum, it's nothing closed, it's very open to people. You can stay here, you can read the book, or you can uh, go through and go in the first floor, in the first cabinet, and then in the second cabinet, and that is a public part of the building, it's a very small one. The old place is only 550 square meters included underground floor. It's very, very small. And archive and office are private, but for curators or for groups, we organize, of course, also the entrance in our archive, and then you can see also the collection of museum, but not in the exhibition form, in the form of uh, archive. They are in the, in the shelves. You can see drawings, but you cannot see like an exhibition. So it is vertical museum where you go really from step to step, so you get like a townhouse uh, uh, as museum. And of course, for me, the biggest sample I uh, had in my life is Johnson Museum, uh, because Johnson Museum uh, was made by Sir Johnson on the similar way. And it is for me, of course, a big sample how an architect uh, created his own world and collected enormous uh, part of architectural drawings in the 19th century. And uh, now we work very close together with Johnson Museum. We made already two exhibitions with them, one of them uh, about Piranesi's uh, architectural and artist work uh, for Pestum, and we'll make uh, more exhibitions in the future. Uh, that is how building uh, staying in the landscape, and that was what, what I mean by the old buildings, that you see a lot of small details, and on the other way, on contemporary way, we try to answer on it, and give these details also to contemporary silhouette of our buildings. And so by coming narrow, you see more. In this case, you see uh, the abstracted uh, drawings, also, by the way, by Italians, by two other Italians, Gonzaga and Toselli, what were uh, very, very important stage designers of, uh, 20, of, uh, sorry, of 18th, 19th century, uh, coming from La Scala, 
uh, to Petersburg and were very important uh, stage designers in 18th, 19th century by Catherine the Great time, by Paul the, Paul the First time in St. Petersburg. From the construction here, it is really very dense and very important for, for uh, defense from the outside cl uh, climate. Uh, that is the wall, what is constructive uh, from the concrete, from the custom place concrete, then insulation, and then inside cladding, where you can put on the drawings, what is very, very good, because you don't see any, uh, uh, any under constructions uh, by the drawings uh, you can put just on the wall, and you see just the wall and just on the drawing, what is very important. And uh, that is the way how, uh, how the matrices were involved in the uh, in the uh, construction, and that is the way uh, where the form was put out, and uh, how these elements were coming out, and uh, how you come inside, and any detail inside and outside are connecting each other. That is a library where the atmosphere should be very warm, in uh, uh, in contrast to very cold outside, very solid outside. And then you go over the staircases uh, in the exhibition spaces, and exactly here you see, uh, you see the first exhibition of us uh, with, uh, with what uh, we were opened. Uh, that is an exhibition of uh, 15 great drawings uh, by Piranesi for Pestum, uh, one year for his death. Uh, Piranesi was uh, in uh, Pestum and made preparation for big etchings. And these 15 preparations were bought completely by Johnson, and uh, now, now they are in the archive of Johnson Museum. And we were the first station after us, Morgan Library and Stanford University Cantor Center, uh, who could, were allowed, was allowed to exhibit these uh, drawings uh, by ourselves. That's another space. And by the way, it's very important that we use here very, very good light. Unfortunately, it's not from Igucini, but Igucini can it even better, much better, I, I'm sure. But we are here also good enough. Next time we do it with Igucini, of course. And uh, this, uh, this light, uh, for drawings, the light is very, very important. It is so narrow and so vertical from corner to the walls that all pictures are very, very good outlighted. But Nobody who comes narrow to the wall brings a shadow on the wall. What is very important because you, sh you, you should see the drawing undisturbed by also very narrow, very narrow distance. And uh, from the distance you don't see the slide, of course, because this panel is a little bit down to that panel of, uh, to that panel of uh, ceiling. So if, I, if you stay for the drawing, you don't see the light. You don't see from what part the light is coming, and I was glad that uh, by, by the uh, mock-up rooms of Igozini, I've seen even much more sophisticated uh, elements in the same way, but as I told already, we were also on our small art on this way also. And uh, that is a small, uh, small, piece, uh, small piece of uh, restroom, of, uh, of, uh, of a small hall, small hall. Uh, where you come uh, from the exhibition hall and can see on this uh, very nice green uh, courtyard or square. And then you, can, uh, you come over and you see from the last floor very glazing in the contrast to the solid downstairs. Uh, you see all, uh, all the surrounding. You have very nice terrace where the entrances by the openings are taking part and uh, last but not least, from the facade to the last detail, to the draw lever, we are going the same language. What is very, very important for me, I have may maybe not a, like, a, like a remarkable uh, big language where every, every house of mine can be immediately recognized, but what is very important for me to go to the last detail, and on this language, that's the last detail, even draw lever, I'm making for this building, exactly for this, uh, for this building, I hope I could be recognized on these small details. And uh, that is the feeling in the exhibition. And uh, in the time uh, we made this uh, building, uh, we made a lot of exhibitions in museum and outside, in German Architectural Museum, in Pushkin Museum of Fine Art, in uh, 
very, very different in uh, Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Paris, in, uh, in uh, Hermitage in St. Peter Petersburg, together with Hermitage collection, in Johnson Museum, uh, in uh, Johnson Museum, uh, in Johnson Museum, we, uh, we got Johnson Museum to us, and we are coming to Johnson Museum with our uh, with our uh, drawings. And we had also many exhibitions of our drawings uh, in other countries, but we had also very nice exhibitions in museum uh, where we have shown very different institutes uh, and very different drawings. Uh, from artists like uh, uh, like uh, Oscar Niemeyer, uh, for example, and uh, that is important. By different drawings. We had personally exhibition of Lebius Woods in our mu in our museum. Uh, we had a very nice uh, exhibition of Alexander Brodsky in our museum. We had a very nice exhibition from Ecole de Beaux Arts. Uh, uh, about about uh, uh, Hotel Particulier à Paris. Uh, so it is very, very different. That's Alexander Brodsky, by the way. And uh, how to do that? That is a, uh, one exhibition before, also from Johnson, about uh, neoclassical British drawings. Very spectacular with these very, very nice panels uh, of Johnson. Uh, who made it for his students, because many of students were never in Rome, and he made these big panels to show them how the drawings should be done. Uh, and on the other side, there is a very nice drawing by Johnson, where Johnson explains about his new building as a ruin. So uh, the thinking of him, the thinking of people in that time was that the building should live very, very long time, and after hundreds of years, should be very nice also as ruin, and he shows how his very new building should be as ruined also as the same nice, and that is the plan of the building. So it is very unusual thinking today, but uh, on hand of drawings, you can see it. And uh, now we have very, very good exhibition from Albertina. And uh, this exhibition is, of course, very nice choice from 15th century to uh, the 21st century, what is also a very, very important step for us to work together with Albertina. And uh, I explain a little bit more. Uh, I hope you can hear me still. Uh, I, I like to explain about that exhibition where our work uh, with Maxi began to be. That is an exhibition I uh, like to introduce to Maxi uh, for uh, maybe uh, an exhibition could uh, take part in Maxi in the future. And this exhibition uh, will speak exactly about the theme of what on the poster is saying about avant-garde and anti-avant-garde. Because, of course, we as architects like to be every time avant-garde architects. We like to be very progressive. But we should know that, that in the time of architect, in the life of architect, there are different periods. And this exhibition about Russian tradition, uh, beginning from the from the beginning of 20th century, where very classical art of education was in the schools, and very classical elements of education were coming in the schools, and how the works, for example, of Boris Eofan were coming out. And after that, suddenly, and very progressive, uh, it was constructivism, and constructivists was coming with completely new ideas. And these ideas of very new types of buildings, of very new types of communal living, of very new types of, uh, of constructions. Uh, you see, we use these constructions uh, in any case till now. And uh, it is completely other language. Uh, we had only 10 years in between, uh, between that classical drawings before and these drawings, only 10 years. And you see how the language was changed completely. And that is the same drawing as I shown before by Chernikov, another Chernikov drawing, and another Chernikov drawing uh, what makes this machine industry forms very uh, aesthetic, very interesting. And what is, uh, that is the way uh, how students in that time were uh, we studied uh, how they made new compositions, suprematic compositions in the Futemas, the most important school uh, of 20s in Moscow. 
and uh, you see that everybody had to combine texts and drawings and uh, abstract compositions together. And on the same time, and that is very interesting, and nearly nobody knows about it in Western countries, but in the same time in Petersburg, uh, the education and the uh, way how to understand an architecture through drawing also was completely other. That's the same 1920, but Petersburg school, and you see how completely different this monumental uh, art of architecture in Petersburg school is. Or for example, this building, it was happened in the same time in two towns where the distance between towns was only 800 kilometers. And you see how this neoclassical, brutal neoclassical architecture uh, was uh, developed and created in completely different compositions, as I repeat, in the same time. And after these two schools were coming on the stage and they are really competitive to each other, very strong competitive, very, very with big pressure competitive. So only, only one school could win. And the school was win, we know, this one, and uh, this very, very interesting development, very tragic development. Uh, it is very, very interesting part of history, uh, what nobody knows and uh, nobody speaks so strong about, because uh, if you go to some Western schools, they say, okay, in the 20s they were constructivists, and suddenly uh, Mr. Stalin uh, explained we should do now tra tra uh, tradition architecture, and they began to make tradition architecture. But that's not the point. They were in all times of 20s, very, very huge development of traditional architecture, what was understatement in uh, comparing with constructivists, but coming very strong out in this, in this fight between two different ways of architecture and coming as a, as a government architecture, as a state architecture in the 30s and 50s with all the samples. And that is, of course, a very big uh, tragedy for architects of constructivists because they couldn't work, they couldn't realize their ideas, they had to make another architecture, they had to change the ideas, otherwise they had no work more. And uh, on the same time, this part, this kind of architecture, were created on very strong, on very strong way, like these buildings, like these skyscrapers in Moscow, this one, uh, we know it as Hotel Ukraina, or Hotel Leningradske, all 30 years, uh, interiors of Hotel Leningradske. And at the same time, the constructivists have dreamed. They had no work, they couldn't uh, explain their roles, and Ivan Leonidov uh, had to work even as model maker, not as an architect, but like a model maker in the Futemas, in the school where he was a leader, he has started, where a young professor, he had to make uh, models, for architecture and create, uh, created uh, these uh, fantasies in the evening time. Or uh, Yakov Chernikov made these very strange compositions of wooden constructions, deconstructivistic wooden constructions in the 30s and 40s. In the time uh, he was forgotten uh, and couldn't create more these constructivistic roles and made this very, very unusual way other worlds in the time, like these drawings. And you see on the world of drawings, the world of architecture, the world of this fight, of this very, very strong uh, contrast in, the, in our occupation, in the trends of our occupation. And the different fates of architects are just the way how they became from classic over constructivismus to the, uh, to the expressionismus and to the classic more like this architect who was leading in the Futemas with his abstract compositions and had to be after that landscape architect with this uh, quite, uh, yeah, quite trad traditional compositions in the 30s and 40s. Or Yakov Chernikov who was very constructivist in, uh, before and made after that such a palaces of communism in his late time or my even teacher, Speransky, who became with Stalin compositions and come over to very modernistic compositions in the 60s. So you see through the architecture how the times were changed and how the fates of architects were pressed from the time, what I think is also a very interesting part of show of architectural drawings. Thank you very much.
Avete domande? Any questions from the audience so far? Appassionati di disegno. If you are a drawing fan, I'm sure you will have some questions. Uh, thank you, Sergei. Very, very interesting. The, the obvious question is, seeing all of these fantastic drawings, uh, now in 2016, there's so much being done digitally. Uh, what is your opinion on the future for these architectural drawings? Uh, and what, what are you seeing in terms of uh, architectural students? Are, are we losing the ability to draw like this? Uh, is, the, am, am I, is it a stupid question? Is there something we should worry about? Well, uh, as I told before, uh, I think it is not a question of uh, education. It is a question of fun. Uh, the drawing uh, is, was, and will be a very important type of, uh, of art a very important uh, possibility to create a pieces of art. Of course, uh, these pieces are related to architecture, but uh, as I tell normally, uh, at the end of architectural drawing is architectural drawing, uh, and at the end of architectural projecting is a building, hopefully. And that is two different processes are, of course, uh, coming sometimes together, or the ideas from architectural drawings uh, could come and fill uh, the real architecture. But uh, I think the most important message what I wanted to give you with my lecture is that the drawing is a fun uh, by itself. And to draw, to understand the architecture through the drawing is a fun by itself. It's not a point I should do it to create building. You shouldn't do it now, absolutely clear. And I wouldn't the last one who say, no, you should draw by hand to create the project. No, you shouldn't. There are uh, very many, as many very big architects, uh, they never draw, or if they draw, I wouldn't say it's architectural drawing. It's like something where you try to uh, explain your, uh, your opinion, but uh, it's not really drawing. Uh, so far, I think drawing is a fun, and I think for any student, for any young or not young architect, it is just important to know that there is a way uh, like to, uh, like to, uh, to ex express yourself and to understand much more uh, what you like in architecture, what you like to do in architecture, and uh, to progress uh, yourself in the drawing. Uh, and I think it is, n it is never dead. I have been uh, for some days in Paris, and there is a very important exhibition of drawings every year in Paris, uh, what, uh, what names Salon de la Sun. Uh, they are not only uh, traditional uh, master drawings they are exhibited, but also contemporary drawings. And I have seen very, very enormous uh, from the quality contemporary drawings. Uh, I don't know if they are artists or architects, but that were definitely architectural drawings. And they were fantastic. Uh, so far I see uh, there are every time people, maybe not many, but there were not many also in the past, uh, who is interested in it. And on the, on the art of drawings, you see very clear how the architecture is in progress. For example, we prepare. We prepare uh, for uh, 2017, uh, interesting exhibition with the German Architectural Museum from Frankfurt, an exhibition about, uh, about not built visions for Berlin from 20s to 90s. Uh, we don't go in the time now, but just to 90s, uh, to beginning of, uh, of the wall fall down and just that the way where the new visions were beginning to be. And suddenly I became a very interesting proposal from a Bicycle Night. Bicycle Night is something where a lot of bicycle drivers are coming together, thousands. In the Istanbul, there were four thousands. They were coming, what is, the, what is the point of them? They go over Berlin and see the places where unbuilt buildings should be. And they were so glad about to see that this exhibition will be by us. So they say, okay, this all thousand people, they come to you first. I told, okay, carefully, I have not a, people, uh, not a place for thousand people. But still they come with small parts, and after that they get uh, postcards, and they go through the places all overnight in summer, and see the places where the building were never built. So how, how far can drawing uh, be a communicator for the people are not 
related to architecture at all because these old bicycle drivers there, all them students, not students from different countries are coming only to this town, only for this night. But you see after that, that architecture could be the great communicator and with the, with the language of drawing, it is a even much better communicate as before because, uh, as I tell, uh, our, uh, our big uh, sense in, the, in, the, in our curator, in my curator uh, activity is uh, nice architecture created in nice drawings. It is very, very profound. It is not, not something very sophisticated. But uh, if the director of Albertina was coming to me, uh, Mr. Dr. Schlöder, and uh, uh, well, I told to him, we explain different drawings. We can explain Hubert Robert, we can explain Canaletta, we can explain anybody. We can explain, of course, also Borromini. We can explain also uh, Hans Hollein, because all that for us is architectural drawings. He, uh, he told us, great. I have thought architectural drawings are these boring drawings, big boring drawings, what nobody likes to see. No, I told it's not that. It's something very, very nice. That's, uh, that's the difference. But do you think there is a... A comeback of architectural drawings? I, I tell you, it, it, was, say, it was never coming away, I think. It was never coming away. Of course, of course. But in the last years, there were symposiums, yeah, conferences, uh, I, I uh, uh, magazines. It is, it is coming more. I, I have a feeling it is coming more because the people also, uh, frankly speaking, clients are quite boring from computer worlds, what would never be so perfect as the perfect. And sometimes the clients are a little bit disappointed after the ready building is even uh, less interesting as a computer drawing. And they say, okay, maybe I like to have something more interesting and like, uh, I like to see the drawing and maybe uh, to think about it a little bit more as I see and not less. Because computer drawing became to be uh, like, a big, like a big fake where you can make fake worlds uh, even faster as they come in the reality. You know, Just for per miei, per, per le persone Just che for che my people here. Four days ago, Zaha did die, no? And we're all very sorry, because Zaha was a great yeah. Yeah. character. In We the have, movie. by the way, one great drawing yeah, by Zaha well, did in the presentation what, what of think, Albertina. What do you think yeah, of, of her early drawings, no? Not only, not only early drawings. As a, all drawings uh, she made, and it's... Uh, Unbelievable pity uh, what's happened, uh, of course. Uh, all the drawings she made, early drawings, and in the foundation there are five very, very nice drawings by Zaha Hadid in our own collection from uh, Iceland uh, um, Regiment Building. Uh, but uh, also we, uh, we explain now uh, about one drawing from uh, Albertina, about uh, the social living building by Zaha Hadid in, uh, on the rails, uh, on the rails uh, in Vienna. Uh, and of course, uh, all these drawings, uh, they were amazing and they, they are amazing till the, till the last point because they, they used new materials, acrylic, but the compositions, the dynamic of compositions, uh, I've, I've seen many, many stages of them, but they were of course amazing. How, how would you describe, I mean, in your drawings, there is this very strong sense of your passion for the history of architecture. Your, well, your, your buildings are moder modern, modern, no? Very modern. How would you describe this, this distance? How, how this distance no, it is, not, it is it important not a, for you? It is not a distance because in my drawings I speak not only about my buildings but also about dialogue between surrounding and my buildings. So drawing has a possibility to explain not only about your own building but also about with whom your own building uh, is speaking. And uh, that's what I mean in my drawings, that what I am most interested in uh, contemporary architecture is a very contrastful dialogue. I'm not so much interested in how, uh, how progressive should be my own building or uh, how harmonic should be my building uh, or uh, how, uh, how old and you should be surrounding around. I, I'm very interested about this contrast, contrast between old and new because I think the, the most important what new architecture became to make really good, this variety of uh, sculptural elements, variety of materials, what are speaking very contrastful but very sharp with the surrounding. <laughs> what I think is the most important. Uh, contemporary architecture is not so powerful, I think, 
in the detail language, in the skin language, in the surface language, they are not so powerful. It is too minimalistic and I think uh, became, uh, becomes to be old and not so good as the old buildings, becomes to be ruined, not so, not so successful as Johnson buildings. <laughs> but, uh, but what contemporary architecture can do really successful to be in very, very sharp uh, contrast, as all our life became to be much more contrastful to, uh, in all relationships it was what maybe before. <laughs> so it's, I think, a very powerful part of contemporary architecture. Uh, so Jay, I have a question for you. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I skip it or not, but when you are approaching one architectural project, uh, you start uh, approaching with a pencil or are you with a sketch? Uh, or uh, you go directly with the, no, with the prototyping system? How, how, how do you work? Uh, well, uh, of course, I, I sketch a lot. Uh, not uh, as it was told every day, not, but uh, I can sketch uh, fast, of course, because I, I have this uh, uh, skill. And uh, well, uh, sketching is good uh, for all of things by a dialogue with another people. I think what is really very powerful and very, very make very good feeling. Also, some uh, at some point for young architects, it makes nothing better as uh, your client or your. Uh, person with whom you discuss, you draw for him and you explain to him very fast uh, how, you, how you like to do. Uh, it makes very good feeling till now because the people are every time very impressed about uh, how the world of architecture became be very fast on the paper. So that's, that's the point. Of course I make it also for myself to, to create these ideas. <laughs> Uh, no, just a very simple question, actually. Uh, what do you think about, what is uh, the role of light in uh, natural light and artificial light in your drawings and also in your architecture? Well, uh, light uh, makes buildings flat or really uh, deep, you know. Uh, light makes buildings cold or warm. Uh, light makes the building. Uh, it, is, it is clear. I mean, if you see the buildings in Russia, or if you see uh, buildings in, uh, in Italy, you see, for example, different baroque uh, deepness, depths uh, between Russia and, uh, and Italy, because in Russia you have very, very pure light. And uh, in depending of light, you choose as an architect uh, the depth of your building, of your, of your, sur of your surface of the building, because uh, light makes the building uh, visible to the people, inside as outside. So, of course, in drawings is the light very m most important part for me personally. Of course, very many people they like so like line, line drawings is also very very fine and interesting type of drawings. But for me, light even in my drawings uh, plays a big role. You you can see it. Sergei, I want to go back to Expo Milano, yeah. eh? to the Russian pavilion. Yeah, yes. uh, very nice, very attractive. Uh, I noticed that was uh, on a rectangular shape, mm. that uh, the rectangular shape was um, harmonized by the, the flying roof mm. eh? at the entrance. I mean, uh, this was because your idea start to create from uh, to create the, the 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 flying roof, or because of the surface available that was a rectangular shape. Yeah, of course, uh, of course, the uh, master planning for uh, for the site was very strong. Uh, we hadn't built higher as, 20, as 12 meter, and. Yeah. Uh, partially uh, 17 meter, but uh, just on one point, and uh, the uh, the lot was quite big, so the building was quite flat, and so far, uh, and the distances between next buildings were very narrow. It was a town planning, but was quite unusual for Expo because normally you imagine. Expo is like uh, objects, like uh, sculptures in the park, where you can see every sculpture from big distance. Uh, in Milan, it was like European town, where you see streets and between, between the buildings, but you cannot see the building at all completely. You see just one wall or one part of the wall, and the buildings are really very flat. 
So far, the, this cantilever uh, should be, from my point of view, a quite nice accent by the opening and uh, quite, quite, uh, quite clear message for all people they are coming. And of course, it's exhibition building also quite nice. Jock, is here. they c could do this selfies in the Nero steel, uh, 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 stainless steel uh, mirroring uh, construction of uh, cantilever. Of course, it should be also some technical uh, point of view that you have a cantilever over 30 meters, what is not, uh, not quite normal. And uh, in all of these things, uh, like an exhibition building, I think it was the right way uh, for this very narrow and very flat uh, uh, reglements uh, we got for this building. Thank you, excellent. It was an exceptional overview, over observation view of all the It is also a very export. Russian idea as a, of this all cantilevers, you know, from 20s, what I, uh, I, crea uh, I shown you. It is very, very so Russian idea of flying forward, so. Thank you. What is, what is uh, can you tell us something about what, what is the situation of architecture in Russia today? Is it optimistic, well, uh, uh, not optimistic? How would you no, of course it's optimistic. It's every time optimistic. Uh, no, uh, we, uh, we had, uh, of course, a time of uh, very uh, uh, big growing of development in the times till uh, 2008, and after that between 10 and 12. Uh, nowadays, we have still a big, uh, a big amount of developments, but they are uh, uh, mostly in the apartment areas. Uh, there are a lot of urban developments, there are a lot of... Uh, positions in the town planning. Uh, we have no, uh, now a new chief architect in Moscow and Petersburg, and they are caring a lot about uh, town planning positions, public spaces. So uh, there is a lot, there is a lot to do also for young, there, are, there is a generation of young, young architects there, they are contrastful to what uh, the older part was made uh, even for five, ten years, but I think it's very good. Um, maybe it's a silly question. Um, we saw very wonderful drawings, but is there a place in this museum for beautiful drawings made from, by um, normal, normal architects, let's say, not so famous? Just enough to be a beautiful drawing? Uh, no, yeah, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, of course, high level of, uh, of uh, the drawings uh, should be achieved uh, to be exhibited in this museum. So by the beginning, we decided, uh, by the beginning we, we decided not to exhibit living architects. But with the time, uh, and I decided absolutely not alone, we have curator <coughs> council, uh, where Christian Feirais is a member of Prisca Prize uh, jury and uh, head of uh, ADES, and uh, Jeho Maria Backhofen, of a chief of uh, archive of German Academy of Art in Berlin uh, are participants. Uh, they recommended for the first not to, not to exhibit uh, living architects, to make this like a, like a sample for living architects. But with the, time, with the time, we noticed that this is not maybe a very right way, because uh, even Libius Woods was not on life on the time of exhibition, but was nearly on life. He was died for three years for the exhibition, and uh, Alexander Brodsky was the first exhibition of living artists, mm -hmm. and it was very successful and good. Uh, the, the only limit we have is uh, it should be a very, very high level of uh, art achievement, uh, of drawings. Uh, it shouldn't be the famous name, but it should be very high achievement uh, of quality of drawings. That's the that's point. I think we can thank Sergei and maybe a few words, final words from Adolfo Guzzini. Well, I think again we can thank Sergei for the contribution he has given to our knowledge and culture. I was very interested in paying great attention to your presentation and I started to think and uh, I kind of saw a kind of a vision of the development of this company. We 
kept uh, on dreaming, we followed uh, and tried to pursue our dreams and we managed uh, to achieve objectives that seem to be impossible. I'm talking about a dream because, of course, like you said, apart from the 3D and the fourth dimension, of architecture, which is light, I, I'm sure that it is important and correct to draw, to keep on drawing, working by hand, connecting the hand, the brain and the dream in order to achieve a dream. And you have shown us a lot of images has been, you know, about the Italian Renaissance, the Italian architecture, the history of Italian architecture all around the world, including, and also a, a way to reinterpret a way to reinvent and relaunch a cultural process of the ideal city, so to say, because by doing what you are doing, and uh, you have thought about uh, your ideal city, about what can be done, breaking uh, the rules and improving uh, our life. So I think this has been a, a kind of an interpretation. So what I take back home with me after your lecture is, again, the ideal city, we had the opportunity this year to present uh, it uh, in our stand in the Frankfurt uh, show using some trees with roots that are attached onto the ceiling uh, and are rooted uh, uh, according to the local culture from our region, uh, rooted in uh, the territory and also a, a bus relief of the ideal city of Piero della Francesca or, you know, his school anyway. So these are little thoughts that, uh, you know, you can develop after listening to your lecture and uh, it can promote and contribute to our plan for progress. Again, Sergei, I want to thank you because your collaboration in two days, you're going to be you're here today and tomorrow you will be at Maxi in Rome, so this has been a great contribution from you, different cultures, but, uh, you know, we have a dream in common. So again, thank you, Mr. Sergei, for the richness you give us.